Good evening and thank you for tuning in. Once again, you are tuned in on this Wednesday, December the 19th, 2012. You are listening to the News Networks and Analysis Project. I'm your host, David L. Johnson Sr. Welcome aboard again. As always, good to be back here live in the studio, able to bring forth the best of the data, the analysis, and the information as we try to present it to the community in a way where everybody understands it. Though some of the issues may appear to be above us in certain situations, we still try to break things down into a language that makes it intellectually digestible even unto our babies. In keeping with the concepts and the, or the constructs of the December month of heavy hitters, picking right back up from where we left off, i got to thank before we get into all of that, everybody, many of you that have struggled with me, to keep the broadcast alive, to make it whatever it may be or has become unto you, I definitely got to thank you for that. As well, I want to say to the listening audience out there that uh, one of the family members, my dear beloved brother Tim, who says that his mother is down ill. So we want to make certain that we in the community keep brother Tim's mother in prayer who's battling with cancer right now. Do things like that for one another because we really don't have no one but each other and the Almighty. Together, if we stick together like that, we're going to come out of whatever it is that we're in victorious and in ways that we have to eventually look back and wonder how in the world did we make it through. So let's be mindful of that. Listen, got a good one in here tonight. As I said before, let me thank Brother Pastor David Roberts, who started off the Heavy Hitters Month in December the 5th, followed up by Brother David Anthony Wiggins on the week of December the 12th. Right back alive, sticking it into the studio as best we can. Got a community activist, a brother, talk show host, as well as his own right. Brother who worked with me, who was in the initial stage when this broadcast started, when we were coming on and were just a half hour strong. The initial, my brother, my friend, my former co-host right here at this Airways on WOLB 1010, I welcome Brother Donald Smith. Uh, thank you, Brother David, for inviting me to the worst radio program in radio history. I believe that it is the worst program, maybe rating-wise, but as far as the information is concerned, it is number one in the uh, book, uh, and as a lot of people within the community see it. Well, I tell you what, brother. One of the things that is always, even though we say that <laughs> we're, being, we're being sarcastic, I yes, do, sir. I do take that to heart because everybody says that they have the number one or the number two talk show in the city, and I respect that. But me, I know how I get the calls. I've even had them call in and curse at me a couple of times. But nevertheless, I, I, I got to be doing something right. Yes, so sir. in that venue, I take that title because I realize I'm out there in that venue in the category all by myself as the worst talk show. Listen, Brother Donald, let me not burn up any time. I want to get to some things that first question straight out the gate. You as a community activist, right here at the close of 2012, where do you see the black community? Do you really want that answer? I, I really do. Well, I'm going to tell you, as far as my perspective is concerned, as far as uh, our people is concerned, they don't look too good, don't look too bright, don't look too happy, do not look too... Uh, I'm trying to find the term for it because it's difficult to try to put it in some kind of context that our people have seemed to lost their minds, all sense of bearing, all the have lost their foundation, their footing, that we are falling victim to anyone who comes along singing a happy tune uh, to us, and we're just going back, not going forward, even though, you know, we hear the message of moving forward. Before it was change, and it was hope, and we was hoping for some change, and it never came about, so our people are disillusioned. And uh, at this particular time, we uh, just lost in the sauce in a ball of confusion. Okay. And, and with that, I know how most of the people hit me. They, they all seem to ask me that. And I, and I kind of take of offense to it, but nevertheless, I'll ask you in the same manner. People ask me all the time, what's the solution? And I always say, before somebody can just sound bite you a solution, you have to at least understand the depth of the problem because I know that in the black community, sometimes some of us, we have jobs mm -hmm. or positions in society or ideologies or outlooks mm -hmm. that are actually part of the problem Correct. that we've inherited from others. And these are the same ones that tend to want to know what is the solution. How do you deal with people like that? Well, you know, if you got a job, you in trouble. 
that be that's because since you have a job, you depend on someone else to feed you. you. You depend on someone else to provide you for the basic necessities of life who has your life in their hands. You're not going to buck too hard. You're not going to uh, uh, do the things and say the things that are necessary. We want easy, we want solutions, but we will not take and really analyze the situation or the problem or whatever's before us. We just want to solution, solution, solution without, you know, doing the homework that's necessary to be able to get us uh, a better understanding of where we are today and where we need to move in the uh, future. So it's not just easily a one uh, so simplistic that you could come up with a, a solution to what's ailing us. What's ailing us, we don't even want to have a discussion about in the black community. Which is an interesting point. Let me let me switch it, switch the topic and up the tempo just a little bit. I'm going to give the background of something. Go ahead. The school shooting which occurred Friday. Now, the uh, published reports say that the gunman was wearing dark clothing, a mask, a bulletproof vest, and carrying four guns. Mm-hmm. But the sympathy venues are saying that this was a young man that had mental health issues or was a retarded person. I've never read in the history of America or shootings and things of that nature where young people were retarded Mm -hmm. but went out and just maliciously killed 27 people. What were your views on that? Well, you know, in a sense sense that uh, some folks are really tired of hearing it because it's becoming a familiar tune that when people of European descent or European people do these kind of things that that build up of sympathy come into place and we fall into that category too of sympathizing with uh, uh, those folks who have uh, mass murdered uh, people um, it's white on white crime it's white on white Violence. It's something that is the norm. It's not the exception. It is the norm of this country. In fact, today's USA Today paper, this one, this is a good one. This is for the community front page. USA Today. Headline, Virginia Tech, Fort Hood, Aurora, Sandy Hook, dot, dot, dot. It says names only hint at mass killing crisis. One every two weeks. Hmm. Now, they go further. The opening paragraph says that mass killers target Americans once every two weeks on average, as you just said. Mm-hmm. Once every two weeks on average in attacks that range from robberies to horrific public shooting sprees, like the massacre that occurred Friday in which 27 people in Newtown, Connecticut were killed. Now, they go further and they say using some news, inca- news accounts and FBI records from 2006 to 2010, the most recent years for which there are complete records available, USA Today identified 156 murders that met the FBI's definition of mass killings, which four people or more must be killed by the attacker. But they're saying that it's happening across America on average, and as the record will reflect and the data seems to show, believe it or not, these types of shootings only take place, and they do take place, I might add, frequently in America, but it generally gets noticed only when something's done that's so outrageous that it becomes what they now call a high-profile killing. Mm-hmm. Well, go ahead, Bill. I'm sorry. Well, with that, it's... Do we really want to take a look at that situation of the white criminality? That's what we're dealing with, white criminality. I don't care if it's politics, I don't care if it's religion. Across the board, is white criminality. Um, and we have to put it in those type of terms because when it comes to European people just going off, just busting the cap in people, just going buck wild, that sympathy factor comes into play that uh, they were uh, had psychological problems. Uh, they didn't get any hugs uh, when they were young, those kind of things. But when it comes to us and our people and our, particularly our children, they say that it's an inherent inherent criminality that exists among us. It's the environment. Uh, it's hereditary. Those kind of uh, things. But we see 